feel like I should do a song and dance now that I have this like Britney Spears type thing on. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm really excited to be here. And um, I wanted to give you a little bit about uh, my background and talk to you about my experience. But uh, you know, I really uh, feel strongly that I am not here to tell you what you should do, but rather tell you what I've learned along the way in the last uh, four years and change. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, so coming from the television background, and my, my brother is actually in, in film in LA still, uh, I know that every good story has three acts and always includes an inciting incident. So uh, that's kind of how I'm going to be uh, framing my talk today uh, and telling you about uh, how I took the plunge. So first, the backstory. I, I went to, I grew up in Santa Cruz and I went to Pepperdine University uh, for my undergraduate uh, and I never got that graduate degree which I totally have a chip on my shoulder about so I'm envious of you all right now, uh, maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, I graduated from, from Pepperdine University uh, with a, a BA in telecommunications and I actually did major in television production. So. Uh, I'm very grateful to my parents for allowing me to stay all four years and, and get that degree, but I, I parlayed it into uh, a career, thankfully. Uh, and so out of college, I got, um, I, I got really lucky. I, well, I interned a lot during college, and, and at the end of my career, or at the end of my uh, four years in college, I was interning at MTV, and I figured I would just, if, it was somewhat of a chaotic situation there, as you can imagine. There was a lot of creativity and not a lot of oversight, and so I figured I would just keep going and not tell them that I had graduated, and so I would just keep showing up. And, um, and so when I told somebody that, uh, who was a, a, a confidant and actually mentor there, he immediately said, no, 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 we gotta figure this out. And so I was actually um, very fortunate to get hired at MTV right out of college. So I graduated on a Friday, I started working on a Monday, and that was perfect for me. I was very, very happy. And one of the first projects um, I got to work on out of four years of Pepperdine was jackass. And so I got to call my parents and tell them that I was working on this new show and that I didn't think they should watch it, but um, <laughs> that I was getting paid and so that was good. And, and one of the, I had to do a lot on the show and I think being the most junior executive and, and you know, I, 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 I think it was just sort of like a joke that I would be sort of one of the point people on the show. And so I had to do a lot from um, the creative process, but also the talent wrangling process. And if you could only imagine what that entailed. I, I had a failed wrangling experience at an MTV Movie Awards where I was walking to the guys you know, down the carpet and when I turned my back to sort of talk to another executive, they decided to um, basically drop trowel on the red carpet and they were in, under my care. So it was just very, um, it was a failure, I'd say. That was one of my epic failures. Uh, but also, um, the, the, the weekly legal calls were just my absolute favorite uh, in working on this show because we had this legal team, you know, Viacom, and we had uh, standards and practices, which are the people that make sure that you don't say the F-bomb on television. And we were on the call each week talking with the creative team from um, Jackass, and that was really all the guys, and they had put together hundreds of ideas within that week, and we had to go through each one and talk about what they could and couldn't do under each scenario. So it was a very colorful experience, but I, I parlayed that into um, working on current series at FX. And um, another show that I got to call my parents about and tell them not to watch was <laughs> Nip Tuck. Um, but I, I, th that was really the last two years of, of my television career. And um, I was so fortunate to work on such innovative content. And I was so excited to be working on these shows where I really respected the creative uh, process there, and I, I was just lucky enough to be um, working on the shows. Uh, but I saw a shift, and what I saw was um, we had always, at MTV even, we had been sort of 10 steps behind this whole internet thing, right? So every time something would happen, we would try to decide how we could, inter how we could integrate successfully with the internet. That was, that was like the term, the entire sort of length of my career was how do we integrate successfully with the internet? And when I got to FX, it was basically the writing was on the wall, advertising was becoming very weak, you know, TiVo was, was you know, 
was it, really, right? And um, I think I just read that 800,000 homes have ditched TV completely to watch television on the web. Well, this was sort of like the, the, the cracks were starting to surface um, when I joined FX. And so I spent um, half my job was to oversee the current show. So I was working on Nip Tuck, The Shield, Rescue Me, and then eventually It's Always Sunny when that came on air. Uh, we had four executives total. And then my other half of my job was to meet with creative people to hear their pitches. So I was sort of like a VC um, in television. So I, I'd hear pitches and then we would decide on buying shows. And that was on the reality side. And so I got to work with uh, really talented people like Morgan Spurlock. We did 30 Days. Um, he's the uh, creator of Super Size Me, the documentary. Uh, but so what I started to see on the current side was that a lot of my time was being spent on what sort of surfaced as product placement. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if you guys are, are from, I'm sure you're familiar with product placement. Um, and, and I think this was sort of like cable TV's answer to the lack of advertising and, and amount of people who were actually watching the shows live. And so um, I spent the second half of my year at FX on the phone haggling with Anheuser-Busch and um, Ford and over the amount of seconds in which Dennis Leary was holding, you know, the Miller Lite bottle, uh, pointing to the camera, and of like how much Vic Mackey would spend in front of the door before getting into the Ford, like literally those decisions would take, you know, really, really long conference calls and a lot of my time. And so I started to sort of get disenchanted with the the, um, the way in which you know innovation was happening in this actually really creative space, and also the the distribution limitations. So we didn't. We had like one person working in online distribution, and um, she sort of outsourced all of her work. So we weren't really dedicated to looking at how our content was going to be delivered to viewers um, off the television. Uh, and so that's when I started to think about making this decision, and that's kind of the backstory. And I'll go more into that decision in depth in a second. But basically, what happened was I, I ended up co-founding Eventbrite. Um, and, uh, and and the rest is history, really. But uh, so the decision. Um, so it was partly logistical. So I had met my co-founder Kevin Hart um, about uh, well, right when I went to FX. So about two years before I I left Hollywood, and. Um, so logistical was that we got engaged and we had to decide where to live, either in LA or in San Francisco. And Kevin um, is a serial entrepreneur and, and was just about to um, move out of the CEO role at his second company that he had founded, which is Zoom, it's international money transfer. And I'm from here, and we're both from here. So I knew that this was like the right decision logistically for me. But secondly, there was that problem. So really a lot of my time was spent with these you know, huge companies haggling over these details that I knew at the end of the day weren't going to move the needle. It wasn't going to be that FX, you know, was going to be, you know, flowing off tons of cash because Dennis Leary held the friggin' Miller Lite bottle for three more seconds. So I knew that there was something wrong there that we weren't thinking innovatively. We were actually just trying to backfill holes that were being caused by, by you know, less money coming through advertising. 